When we talk about the string matching algorithm, it could be understood as the algorithm that helps find the occurrences of some pattern in a larger string. We encounter the problem in our daily life while searching for a keyword in a text file, but the algorithms could be applied in a much larger scale. For example, matching DNA patterns. Before getting to Nurse Morris Pratt algorithm, I'd like you to imagine yourself in the scenario of finding a color pattern from a huge color tape constructed with orange, yellow, and blue. Say you are first given the pattern orange, yellow, blue. The first instinct that everyone would have is to compare every color on the tape to orange. Once we find a temporary match, we then compare the color after it to yellow. If that doesn't work out, we start from the next color on the tape again until we find a match. This method can be referred to naive method when solving string matching problems. But wait, haven't we wasted a lot of time moving back and forth on the tape? What if we could save some time by letting the computer know that it doesn't have to move back on the tape because the pattern is not likely to start before the current color? As the pattern is orange, yellow, blue, whenever a mismatch happens on blue, we could hold at the current position on the tape instead of moving backwards and start a new comparison, because the previous yellow can never be the start of a match. Well, that seems a good idea, but now things get a bit tricky. You're now given the pattern yellow, yellow, blue. Here we start, and we have luckily found a match of two yellows at the beginning. But unfortunately, the third color isn't blue. The matching fails. If you take a closer look at the pattern, you'll realize that the first two colors are identical, which suggests that once we have found a match for two yellows, we don't have to jump back to the previous colors on the tape either. In this case, instead, we could hold our position on the tape, but jump back within the pattern because we know that this yellow could be the start of the pattern now. All we have to do is compare the current color to the one after the first yellow in the pattern. The idea of holding positions on the tape and jumping within the pattern is the basis of how we perform the Nurse Morris Pratt algorithm. How is this more efficient than the naive method? Well, as we go back and forth every time we have a mismatch in the naive method, we're actually comparing every substring with lens m and the string with lens n. Therefore, given the time complexity of big O m times n, but using the KMP algorithm, we stop looking back in the string. Therefore, each character or color, as in our example, will be compared for a limited time instead of m times. The time complexity of the algorithm is suddenly reduced to big O n. So here comes the final question: How do we tell the pattern where to jump back to? Let's take a look at our color tape example again. As we can see, the second color in the pattern is the same as the first one. We therefore mark a one under this color, suggesting that this is the same as the first color of the pattern. However, The first and third colors are not seen before within the pattern, so we put a zero under them. These indexes make up a prefix table in the KMP algorithm. Note that we only write indexes for those identical to colors starting from the very beginning. So if the pattern is yellow, blue, blue, we should not put a two under the third blue. At the point we have a match for two yellows, but fails afterward, we refer to the prefix of the previous color, which is one, and move to the first place of the pattern and align with the tape. It says that although this yellow does not manage to be the second color in a match, it could still potentially be the first one 
because it's identical to the first color in the pattern. Now we can simply compare the current color to the next yellow in the pattern, so on and so forth. Finally, let's try to write the code of the KMP algorithm. We begin with assigning values to our string, pattern, prefix table, and position indicators i and j. j keeps incrementing within the length of the string. When a mismatch happens, we keep skipping back within the pattern. If we have a temporary match, we move to the next character. If we find a full match, we output it and look for the next match. Let's look at another example, this time according to the algorithm provided. Our pattern is now yellow, blue, yellow, blue, orange. So our prefix table would be 0, 0, 1, 2, 0. We initialize i and j with values 0 and 1. The first character has a match, so we increment i. The second one doesn't, so we enter the while loop, refer to the index of yellow, which is 0, and jump back to the beginning of the pattern and start comparing again. We keep going until we magically found a match for the four characters in a row. Now, the fifth one, yellow, fails to match orange. So we enter the while loop again, assign the index of blue, which is 2, to the variable i. Now we compare yellow to the third one in the pattern, and it has a match. Keep going, and finally we have a full match for the pattern, and output it. The way we build prefix table is exactly the same as how we have wrote the main algorithm, only that we treat the pattern itself this time as both the pattern and the string. Given that our time complexity of the main algorithm is big O n, we could easily infer that of the prefix algorithm would be big O m. Since m is usually much smaller than n, the overall complexity of the algorithm shall not overrun big O n. Thank you for watching this video lesson, and I hope this has shown you how the KMP algorithm basically works. Please keep practicing string matching using the KMP algorithm until you fully understand it. Good luck!